I've always felt like the 13 inch MacBook Pro was a little too small, but the 16 inch was just way too big for me. So the moment rumors started popping up about the 14 inch MacBook Pro, I was really excited and it's finally here. I've been using the base model with the M1 Pro and here's what I think about it so far. This year, Apple is clearly rethinking some things with their new MacBook Pro lineup. And even though I'm here for it, I'm also a little frustrated. So the first thing we've all noticed is the new 14 inch is considerably thicker like it should have been in the first place for thermal reasons. Because even though Apple went thinner with their previous generation of devices, a ton of people like me had a bunch of thermal issues. Now, opening up the laptop, the next thing I noticed is that display. Not only is it brighter, but ProMotion makes the laptop feel so much smoother. Even just dragging the cursor along the screen looks really nice. Let's talk about the notch, because I feel like at this point, Apple intentionally did this to match the design language of their iPhones. Because I believe a company that's that big can find a creative way to implement a great quality webcam without sacrificing the display. If it was honestly Face ID, I would be a little bit more understanding and I'm probably gonna get used to it at the end of the day, but for now, it's just an annoying design decision by Apple in my opinion. Moving on, I really like the new matte black keyboard. It actually complements the new aesthetics of this space gray colorway with the black color scheme around the laptop. Now, one notable change this year is the ports and I feel like Apple is a little bit embarrassed, but they're not going to publicly admit it. To start off, the SD card slot should have always been there for a device that's centered around creatives. MagSafe has always been a feature that MacBooks had that stood out from a ton of laptops in the market. HDMI, well, I guess I'll cut them a little bit of slack because I'm still surprised many devices are still using this port. But anyway, I do know a ton of audio enthusiasts that are gonna appreciate this new headphone jack port. Aside from the design and new features, we are all most excited for the M1 Pro and M1 Max. And I gotta say, this was definitely worth the hype. Navigating on Mac OS truly feels faster on the M1 Pro. Opening up graphic intensive or processor intensive applications is noticeably faster. Even browsing feels snappier and multitasking was pretty impressive, especially when I had multiple creative applications running at the same time. Speaking of creative based applications, this device is honestly amazing for that. I can scrub through my 4K timelines on Final Cut Pro in the best quality without a single stutter. Even with more graphic intensive projects where I'm using a ton of visual effects, it seems to handle this very, very well. What was really great is fans rarely kicked in when I was editing um, and grading 4K footage for my Sony a7 III. In fact, the fans rarely kicked in in general when I was doing anything that was power hungry. Speaking of power, y'all, the battery life is actually pretty incredible. If you're a true pro user, you can actually get away without having to have this device plugged up to a power source the entire time. I've already edited and exported 4K projects without having to worry about the battery draining during that export. I'm going to be testing this out a lot more, so stay tuned for that. In fact, I'm thinking about doing an in-depth review for anybody who's considering picking up this device as a video creator or just an editor. 